so I guess the uh, the the one event that everybody really talk talks about is the the sandstorm, the night of the sandstorm, uh, which is where I got um, the medal, uh, the Silver yeah. Star for, um, which I'm still surprised. You know, there's no chocolate in it. I tried to unwrap it the other day. There's <laughs> nothing in there. So we 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 get up there and the the majority of the calf squadron moves north. So later on, I find that this is uh, all connected with the, the battle of on the Joth during the sandstorm okay. fight around the uh, 24, 25 March. I think that those are the time set. Um, simultaneously back in the States is my youngest daughter's first birthday oh. <laughs> that same night. And I'm like, yeah, well, there's a, that dad didn't want to die on your birthday. So <laughs> I guess it all worked out. Some more motivation for you. Yeah. 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 There was a, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, <laughs> so get there, they move and we, we stay there. Uh, uh, there's two bridges, uh, connected over the Euphrates and, um, it was, uh, objective Floyd. Mm -hmm. That was the objective area and crazy horse troop had to stay there and secure the bridges. Cause it was the only thing that the, the armor could cross right at that okay. point. Well, obviously the enemy knew that as well. So uh, at this point, we hadn't seen a, any uh, armor or anything like that. They were hiding the, the Habarabi and the uh, Medina uh, cores were kind of, uh, either they were melding together, but they were also uh, kind of uh, hiding from us. So there was not a lot of interdiction to take a lot of this stuff out. So they were out there somewhere. Okay. Um, so we get across there. This, this sand just starts just rolling in, you know, a, a midday in the afternoon, stuff like that. And I'm like, what is this? It looked like the that movie, The Mummy. <laughs> just, oh, yeah. <laughs> but later on, we find out it's like the the worst sandstorm in forty years. Whoa! But that always goes with these things, right? It's like the worst winter in a hundred years. All right. The worst yeah. sandstorm in the last five hundred years. Um, <laughs> right. It's right. Nuts. <laughs> so it, the visibility is just down to nothing. Um, it, everything's orange. It's it's super yeah. weird. So we're just kind of sitting in a circle. There's a looks like an abandoned police station uh, right next to us, and uh, it's a it's a, it is a true intersection, true intersection like this. And right before you get down to the river, so we had a kind of a, a security on the the bridge, and okay. uh, and for, I mean, it's been it's been like this is a, this is twenty years ago. Right, right. <laughs> uh, it still feels like uh, it's uh, fresh in my mind sometimes, and. Uh, uh, but it's a sequence of events. So sure. Sure. Um, so I'll do the best I can to not bore. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. No, we get it. <laughs> it's a so, long time ago. <laughs> it is a long time ago. And I, and it's crazy cause I'm only 25. And <laughs> right. uh, it's so, so weird. Yeah. It is weird. I, so we get over there, the sand's rolling in and stuff like that. And then it kind of just, it kind of crescendos. The guys just start popping up out of nowhere. They were under the bridge. They were in hide sites. It was a weird mix of, guys dressed in civilian clothes, which I imagine was the Fed Ayin kind of dudes yeah. and uh, Iraqi police, stuff like that. Wow. And it just built and built and built. And then they were just on us. And it was just small arms fire everywhere. <laughs> RPGs, small arms fire. It was nuts. And yeah. we're sitting in elevated positions because we're on top of the armor <laughs> and right, right. off the armor shooting <laughs> just to keep fighting. Uh, they start running vehicles down the road with just like those, those little weird Mercedes freaking trucks with the engines underneath yeah, yeah, yeah. Congo looking trucks. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, they start running those right into us and, uh, guys come spilling off of that and, you know, just, just shooting and shooting and shooting RPGs, just crisscrossing everywhere. Uh, Jeez. the volume of fire was so high that it nearly snapped every single antenna off the vehicles. Jeez. That's insane. That is. That is insane. Just the chance of all those. Yeah. I mean, just, oh my gosh. I know. I was just like, <laughs> so we get this one particular truck, uh, just happens to, uh, come through and <laughs> they, they obviously get the driver and, and it, it this, this dumbass just, ended up in the wrong place and the Bradleys just start working the coax and the guys are just firing at this. They're just eating these dudes up. So one guy gets into the intersection and now Aki had given me a bipod for my, 
<laughs> for at this point when we met up right, right. Uh, a little while ago. Um, and so I had it sitting here. I had the H250 handset. Kids, we didn't have the damn ear things. <laughs> <laughs> Peltors. <laughs> so I was like, hello. Uh, got this thing going. Magazine in, you know, ready to go. You know, we were already popping dudes that were getting too close. This guy comes right out in the intersection. Um, sees me. I see him. Not very far away. I don't. I just look at him. And then just ta, 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 just just starts right off from the hip. Yeah, yeah. And I don't remember really hearing a whole lot. I remember feeling things. <laughs> Not sure. like bad feelings, but uh, just it was it was like a weird disturbance in the air right right and i didn't even realize i was pulling the trigger too yeah, yeah. he goes down um i don't have the handset in my hand anymore <laughs> and i'm like holy shit holy shit <laughs> and what was the deal that you shot out of your hand no i just, you just dropped, dropped it, it. I oh you dropped, dropped, dropped it okay it. yeah yeah i didn't okay. shoot out of my that would have been a cool story though it's like yeah, there's uh, there's five things. There are five things you should never do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look like a shop teacher from the seventies. Uh, right, right. So, but my SATCOM antenna, uh, kind of, kind of bent over a little bit. Oh man! And I'm like, God dang it! So, and I was like, Oh man, my guy. So they had given me an army dude, another army guy, uh, another soldier, okay. and he had a saw with him, and they gave me a 240, and about four AT4s. Claymores, grenades, and I'm like, give me another soldier because this is crazy. I'm not I'm gonna right. This crap. Um, yeah. So this this kid was awesome. So, uh, but I turn around and my romad, <laughs> this guy, they would gotten down because they're smart. And he's like, yeah. did you get him? And I'm like, what are you doing? Are you helping me shoot these guys? <laughs> so I'm like, hey, you, you got any more in that saw? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I put some more into him. He's like, God, comes up like that. Comes up ricochets off the road almost hits one of the bcs and i'm like okay stop I, it was nuts because we were just so close into each other yeah 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 and, uh it, it, it's just crazy so we run out of ammo almost everybody runs out of ammo right Jeez. completely black we start picking ak's up off the dead and i had like some rounds <laughs> m9 which i know some people like that thing that beretta but when you're a, a small guy like me it feels like I was like, yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> so I go over there, grab, grab his AK, grab another one, strap this one on, boom, boom, boom. I'm running back. Um, I pop a couple rounds, <laughs> M9, back at this dude and somebody else that was coming up. And uh, there's a guy that's climbing up one of the tanks. Like, kah, 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 get him. Um, get back to the Jesus. vehicle. Oh, it was nuts. Oh, I don't God. know, you know, in, it's not like the movies because, uh, you know, bullets bounce. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. Oh, right, right. <laughs> so dumb. Right. And you guys are like so tight. Yeah. yeah I can't, oh, man, I can't nuts. imagine the chaos. Oh, it was. It was complete chaos. And the radio's going off. So the, the antennas are pretty much down, but everybody's, you know, working. So I get I get the I tape. I take the 100 mile hour tape. Yeah. The greatest thing ever made for man. Right. By man poor man and luckily the a lot of the components in the the wiring wasn't really damaged it was the casing and some of the um you know wires and stuff sure, sure. and get this thing up and <laughs> i look at my guy and i go <laughs> <laughs> warhawk warhawk this is advanced five seven radio check we're just listening and it gets that garbled satcom like, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like uh, it's a war high, heavy, loud and clear. How me? I have Lima Charlie. Holy crap. Thank God. So I said, uh, I said, Hey man, we're, we're surrounded. Um, you know, they're, they're, they've overrun us. You know, we're, we're getting black on ammo. I need, I need something I can't see, but I need, I need anything you got. Sure. And they're like, okay. So they just start sending me everything. I mean, everything. I mean, I was stacking them up. I couldn't see them. Just running them in, just hitting around us, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, just nailing, and I was trying to crater the roads too, so they couldn't bring the because they're trying to take fuel trucks and run them into the tanks. Oh my like god! One of our main uh, battle tanks, so the one of the Abrams, shot one of these things right before it hit him, 
and just whoa, <laughs> it was nuts. Oh it's my crazy. god! And I, I'm laughing now because the absurdity of all this going on in such a small space. Sure, right? sure. Uh, and yeah, it's it crazy. So oh. yeah, so we're, we're fighting. There's still just everything's flying around us. It's it's it, the dust and the sand is everywhere. It's all over us. It's in your mouth. It's everything. And and you, of course you're breathing heavy. Your drill yeah. up, so you're just just sucking in uh, beautiful Iraqi sand. <laughs> so drop it, I'm dropping this. One guy checks on with uh, uh, Wickman, 103s, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's what it was the cluster munition, wind correctable, right, right. A cluster munition was like a 87, but I think that's what it was. Uh, but it was the wind correctable uh, type. And, sure, sure. And I'm like, oh shit, I've read the J fire. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never... at that point though jfire's out the window i mean everybody's all around you. jfire but i don't know if that's gonna be cool or not so yeah. i'm talking to the captain we're, we're cross talking boom, boom boom and he goes hey i think they're trying to come up he goes look on your map at this location there was a dry creek bed kind of area because the river was so close that maybe it fed into and he thinks they were coming up there and i'm okay. like hey so that's that's pretty close and he goes I know. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so this had him drop there. And I mean, cluster munitions at danger close. Huh? Sucked. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It was terrible. <laughs> Cause I kept asking him questions too, right before I cleared him. Uh, I was like, Hey, uh, this is where we are. He's like, yeah, I got you brother. Don't worry about it. I got you. Don't worry. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Golly. So, uh, I just kept going and going and going. And uh, my Romad at one point, and, and it's a little out of the timeline context, but at one point he looked at me and he said, uh, he goes, are, are we going to die? And man, I, I wanted to be, I really wanted to be profound and I really wanted to put his mind at ease, you know, because this is your troop and stuff. Sure. And all I could come up with was mm, probably. It was there was no bad. way around it. I, I knew we were. It was that bad. That you it was that like, bad. I thought we were going to just, I thought we were going to die. I, oh my God. And I said, so <laughs> then I try to be the cheery NCO. And I said, but I mean, if we kill 50 or hundred for each one of us, that's a pretty good day. Huh? Nice optimism. This is like a, <laughs> the ultimate optimism. <laughs> <laughs> that's a glasses half like, full kind of you, guy. You're right? You're not going to see that on a kid's show, but guess no, what? No, no. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna die, but we'll take about a hundred of them with us, so it's yeah, all. Good. That's that's totally worth. You'll probably get into heaven over that. Those are good numbers. Oh Those God. are really good numbers. So that's, that that illustrates just how bad. Like, if anybody wasn't getting it until now, that right there illustrates how bad it was. That you're like, no, this is probably it for us. Like, we're not, we are not getting out of this. Yeah, and we're that, good. You you had to. I mean, not even. It wasn't like you were scared. It was just like, man, it's this. It's just a fact, man. Well, that's so the crazy. weird thing too. I I wasn't scared. Yeah, I wasn't afraid. Um, I had made my peace. Sure. Um, beforehand, right, uh, right, just in case. And uh, you know, I, I, it, it, like I said, we we weren't conscripts; we we're volunteers. Uh, that that's part of the risk. And uh, if we could take those guys out, which will become relevant later on here in the story, here in a second, <laughs> what right. I was about to do. Um, but uh, and I will say this though that it wasn't till. After that, after I got back was when I got scared yeah. and had problems. That was that, that happens was after, dude. after everything wore off. Cause I had a job to do. Nobody needed me to fall apart. You know, sure. we, we had, we had shit to do. Right, so right. it wasn't until, you know, when you're in a relaxed setting and everything is going great <laughs> and you're sitting there just watching cartoons that you're like, Oh my God. What just well, it's like all those feelings that you compartmentalized, mm-hmm. they didn't go anywhere, they're still there. Yeah, so now you have now you're in a like you said, in a calm situation, a controlled environment. Now, all those things come out, and you're like, Oh, that's what I should have been feeling. And you start I mean, having those residual feelings that are, yeah, I can imagine, man. I, oh, well, I, yeah. I can't Ch- imagine really. Chaos is so much better, chaos yeah. So much you don't better. have time to think about this crap, yeah. yeah you don't have yeah. time to think about anything else, so um. Drop the bombs, drop the bombs. Um, <laughs> so they, I get this call that there's a, that a couple guys got into that little building we were next to. 
Right? Okay. And uh, I looked at the soldier that was with me, and he wasn't with me with us for very long. It was a, kind of a, you know, one shot deal with with him. Uh, he was a yeah. twelve Bravo or something, an engineer, something okay. like that. And uh, I said, I said, crap. I said, well, somebody go get him. And they said, well, we're busy. I was like, obviously, <laughs> we're all busy. <laughs> right, right. So I said, well, man, I gotta. I, these guys could throw a grenade into the, you know, into the track at some point and uh so i looked at this guy and i was like do you, do you have any room clearing training and he goes no sergeant I'm like god dang man neither do i <laughs> you know what do i know yeah yeah right um, so i look i looked at my romad and i said uh, i said hey man if something happens to me this is what we're doing and he goes well, don't go i, go, I gotta <laughs> go i go unless you want to go and he was like no I was like, okay, then I'm going. <laughs> so I make it stuff up and I know there's my buddy, Joe Hahn and a couple other guys that are probably seals and some <clears throat> guys are probably like cringing right now when I tell this story, but yeah. um, we got, I said, okay, we're going to go in and I'm going to go this way and you're going to go that way. And I said, if there's anybody in there, cause he still had like half a can in the saw. Sure, I sure. Said, I'm just going to, I'm going to take a knee and you just like hit the room. <laughs> I said, we're not using grenades though, because it looks thin in there. Yeah. He, yeah. Goes, he goes, that sounds like a great idea. That's a horrible <laughs> idea. That is a terrible idea. <laughs> no one should have backed me up on that. <laughs> but yeah, here we were. Right? Hey, you were doing your best. I mean, I was doing the yeah, best I, mean, I had. You know, you knew that threat had to be eliminated, so you figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about eliminating myself. So, <laughs> so we're going there, and it wasn't a big place, so there was only maybe, maybe, maybe three rooms, right? Uh, yeah. maybe a little connecting, uh, kind of a pseudo hallway into a room and we're going, we're going, we're going and get in there and the, the, there's nobody in there. Now my heart is up in my throat sure. and I've got my nods cause I don't, this thing's broke. Uh, I can't, I've got to hold my nods up like this. Oh my God. I would have, <laughs> oh right? I would have given anything for a flashlight, but at that time we didn't really have a whole lot of equipment. Sure. No, of you course. Remember, we didn't, yeah, yeah. we didn't have a whole lot to operate with. Um, right. it was, it was going to certain places, but not every place. So, yep. uh, in an armor unit, you're not really going to get all that. Cause you're not supposed to be doing that stuff. Right. Right. But here we are. <laughs> I know I so, not, to, I don't want to get on the soapbox, but that was my biggest complaint about all that stuff. I was like, a, a JTAC should have each guy. It should be, you should have the same kit regardless of where you are. If you're soft armor, light, whatever it is, that way we can mix and match you guys. But yeah, I, I was anyway, I don't want to. You know, oh, no, tangent, no, it's okay because okay. it, it, you should it have had all that. Things. I didn't, I didn't have anything because I went right from PSAB out to there. That's a good point, too. So yeah, borrowing equipment. And yeah, I do. I we eventually uh, got that changed for future ops for our guys, and I think nice. that's, that's one of the best things that we've ever done. As at JTEX, we got them uh, physically more fit, we got the right uh, doctors, the right equipment for them, and uh, yeah, you know, of course, none of those uh, young buds are going to thank us. Right. Because you're ungrateful. Exactly. You ingrates. I hope you're listening right. to this right now, you ingrates. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, guys. I love you. Um, so, I, I, you know, we make our way in there, right? And there's there's nobody in there, nobody in there. There's a dog tied up on a desk. And this dog is pulling this desk. I mean, it's lying. And uh, I'm like, man, I am not getting bit. So I whap, whap, whap. I've never fired a weapon inside a building without hearing protection. Oh my God. <laughs> my ears were ringing. <laughs> that was the dumbest thing ever. Oh. Uh, but so those guys weren't in there. It was just the dog. They, they, they got, I, yeah, I don't even know if they were actually ever in there. Oh, okay. So it, there was just so much flying on the radio and stuff. Sure. Like that. So we get back out there. Like I said, this is the timeline's a little wanky, but this is kind of the gist of the context. But meanwhile, you're like deaf from like shooting a weapon inside a building. Yeah. <laughs> no ear pro. <laughs> it's like, come on. Uh. You know, or I probably got a concussion from artillery earlier that week. Oh and, my God. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time, man. Good times. So we're, you know, we're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting. Uh, then drop bombs, we run out of ammo, we get, we get their weapons, you know, all this stuff. And, um, all of a sudden it just gets quiet. I just, just dead, dead quiet. And all you can hear is the turrets. 
back and forth, just looking. I had all these aircraft up at one point. I had an F-14 come up and say, hey, uh, I'm, I'm a qualified air fact. Do you need help? And I was like, God, yes. <laughs> Which I Please. ran into that guy at NTC. Oh, no pilot. kidding. Yeah, he was an awesome guy, man. Once oh, you man. found out you know, who each other were, because uh, he was the, uh, the assistant to the uh, 7th Fleet Commander. Oh, okay. And then he just dropped all you know, formal stuff. He's like, Oh my God, brother, how you doing? Are you? I'm so glad you're alive. I never found out what happened to you. And I'm like, yeah. Oh my God. How crazy. So, yeah, it was crazy. So, um, eventually all those aircraft left. It was super quiet. It was raining in a sandstorm. So the, I think at one point I just looked up at the sky and I was like, really? <laughs> like what else? I mean, come on, around? man. <laughs> what, it's what not bad want? enough. So they, they, you know, there's a little bit of a lull uh, in the battle, and uh, they, you know, they start asking, "Hey, send us a casualty report each section." Zero, 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 zero. Black on ammo, really? like zero. 189 guys, not one freaking casualty. I love it. I it, love it so much. It's insane. It's divine. Yeah. It, it's that's the only way to explain it, man. It's just, it's just nuts. How does that happen with that I mean, much stuff going on? It's crazy. It is, but it has a lot. To, it has a lot to do with you guys and who you were. You, you yourself, you know, drop have, having control of all that aircraft. I mean, I'm sure once the bombs started dropping, a lot of uh, fighting spirit on the enemy side went out the window. I'm sure they're like, okay, this is it. We're it's no more like force on force. I mean, we're we're up against you know aircraft now. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them bugged out because of it. You know. So that's here, amazing, dude. It's super quiet. Yeah. Right. And then we get this report. There's armor moving in from the West towards us. Now the ASOC was trying to hit them, but they were kind of jumping from kind of an urban area to urban area. Yeah. And they were moving towards us. So that all those dismounts that we were taking on and stuff, uh, I think they were trying to, they were I, I, fixing us. They were uh, fixing us in place uh, and keeping us there, right? Uh, okay. now, I don't know if they thought that we were – I know we were kind of a part of a feint, but I don't know if they thought we were a main effort. Uh, we probably – to them, we were probably fighting hard enough to be like a brigade. Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty crazy. Um, so they, uh, uh, they're they they're moving out. They're moving out. And, uh, you know, they, they, they got them on the J-Stars. They got them on the EAQing. Um, I'm like, oh, how many are there? It's a lot of them. Um, it's like, holy crap. I'm like trying to figure out what I'm going to do. All the aircraft are gone. There's no more aircraft. And I said, uh, I said, hey, can you get me anything? And they're like, well, we're still trying to figure this out and figure that out. I thought, because we What's had to got... figure out. It's like you, you just went through all this stuff. Well, yeah. Oh, man. One guy got on there, and, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you this here in a second. because Okay. Yeah, I don't want to cut you off. It just seems no, like no, I'm, no, like, I'm on the edge of my seat here. Like, could you give this guy some more cast? Jesus. I know. So um, before all this, we, we were getting a lot of false hits on radar for camels, and we would maneuver in on camels. Oh, okay. So I had to tell the captain, I was like, hey, uh, I might need to go check this out. These are not good choices, by the way, going into the building, going to do this. These are not, these are choices that are made by someone who's never been in a situation like this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was by well, the seat of my pants here. I was like making shit up. <laughs> you ever hear those guys on uh, the band of brothers guys uh, when he crawled up in the tree to shoot at the, and he sure, sure. Do that. Not, not when he was seasoned, eventually you never do that. But yeah, yeah I was yeah. making a lot of, wrong life choices that I got lucky with. So <laughs> I grabbed me and a couple of my best friends. And uh, when I looked on the map, man, that's, it's actually pretty far, yeah. but it didn't feel that way. So we were sticking to the roads because we could still see the road and get out there. Now what they were doing is they were marshalling right in the open field, getting ready to press across the bridges towards us. Okay. More than likely that's what they were getting ready to do. Yeah. Um, they 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 knew if they mixed it in with this that would probably negate our uh force multipliers like aircraft stuff like that sure they sure didn't realize is that we didn't have anything left at that point <laughs> they yeah. weren't launching gcast or anything like that i'd used everything right wow <laughs> so i can't believe um, they wouldn't even give you something though knowing that that other that tank those tanks were out there though you think well, they, they were, were trying though 
They were trying. Oh, okay. I'll okay. give them that. They they were trying. They were just there wasn't a whole lot. The sandstorm was huge. It yeah. was affecting everything. Oh, but okay. Everything yeah. that I had that I was using at that point was already in flight before it hit. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so nobody could take well, off. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was really bad. So nothing okay. on any of those uh, elements, uh, ASOC or anybody else, they were actually doing a great job. They were, they were working their butts off to try to get everything that we needed. Oh, okay. And from what I understand, um, the, the SATCOM radio was the only long haul communication we had left. Yeah. Everything else was taken out. So the captain comes over, they clear the, uh, they clear the, the, the air force net, the JARN, to let the captain talk to Colonel Farrell, who just retired as a three-star, by the way, because awesome dude, called yeah. Terrible Terry Farrell. is a perfect Cav commander, right? So he's like, uh, you know, hey, sir, we're, we're, we're down on this. We're down on that. You know, we got nowhere to go. We're trapped. You know, we got this armor coming in. And then Farrell gives this amazing speech, from what I understand. It's one of the best speeches ever like motivational yeah, yeah. my boy blue kind of thing and uh over the satcom over satcom and all these tech p guys heard it and i never heard it <laughs> i never got to hear it <laughs> all yeah. i got to see was the captain's reaction he goes i guess we're staying i'm like okay i go so you know let me confirm so we'll go over there by the road this is this, like i said it was dumb it had to be done because you know I, a, I mean, somebody had to, yeah, confirm what well, it was. Or, yeah, I have a medical condition called stupid. So <laughs> uh, it's an advanced It's not your fault. Yeah, yeah, it happens. <laughs> so we go over there, and uh, the the dust clears a little bit, and I, I see a Russian tank. And I'm like, oh. And I kind of hit the guy next to me, and he goes, what's that? And I'm like, go, 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 go. <laughs> These dudes start. They know we're there now. They start rattling off a, probably a disco or something like that because it's thumping, 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 thumping. And, uh, but it wasn't near us or anything. So thank God. And we're getting back. We got a, we got a Brad and, a, and an Abrams on the bridge, right? And I'm like, as I'm running across this, this, this road, I'm thinking, oh my God, if they see us running towards them, they could shoot us. So I do the best thing I could think of. <laughs> Kind of like a Team America thing. They start yeah. yelling, I'm American. Oh, my God. There's a survival at that point. No, It is a survival like, at that point. Yeah. So I get on the radio, and I'm like, okay. They, it's confirmed that they're, they're there. But, and I don't know who it was, but somebody got on the radio and asked me, are you sure they're not trying to capitulate? Those are the words he used. And I'm like, huh? I go, no, they're not trying to give up. They just shot at us, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, nobody, sh- nobody tries to give up by shooting at you. Yeah, it's like, oh, sorry <laughs> about that, my friend. I give you Brother Price. You want this, huh? <laughs> That's my best Iraqi. Sorry. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> It's yeah. crappy. Um, <laughs> so there's a B-1 on its way home. There's a tanker on its way home. So they put the peanut butter and chocolate together, and they turn the sucker around, and he checks in with me. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Now, I talked to... The guy was talking to him on the radio later on in life, and he said, uh, he goes, you know, I didn't even authenticate you. He goes, you remember what you said to me? And I said, I I said, I don't, I don't remember. He said, well, we checked on, we did our uh, fighter to fact, and he goes, you came back over and said, it's sweet. It was 12 GB 31s. That's authentication enough. That's a th- yeah, he didn't even try after that. I, mean, I was like, man, I don't even remember saying that. I was like, I, w- I had been up. It was so, I was so tired. Everybody was tired. We were beat. So you got this tank force out here, right? That's awesome. And I'm like, okay, they're real close together. Um, from the guys who were in Desert Storm and the guys who fought, uh, or we're preparing to fight in the Cold War, the full of gap scenario. I, a lot of like Chief Carpenter and stuff, guys like that. Um, those guys actually, in those scenarios, would teach us how to fight surrounded because you were going to get overrun anyway. So you yeah. just got to keep fighting. So that's where I learned a lot of that stuff. So nice. when they were uh, they were sitting there, um, I wanted to drop one JDAM kind of middle front of them. And then so many seconds... Uh, 200 meters west of that. And if they get overwhelmed in the front, I figured with their tactics, if they're consistent with the tactics they always used, yeah. they were immediately, this this back element would back up into it. 
and at least scattered enough to break up any momentum they would have coming over the bridge. Smart. I told the captain that and he goes, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Just do whatever, man. Yeah. <laughs> at this point. So, you know, that B1's got a wheel around. He's a, he's a big boy. Uh, he's coming around. I said, Hey, give me a five minute out call. Um, once you get in place, because I got to get everybody to button up because it was, it's pretty close. It was right across the river. Sure. And, uh, I said, okay, everybody button up because in the five minute out call, uh, I think I said clear to engaged, uh, clear to engage. Yeah. Um, but hey. there was no type threes back then, but I think I said clear to engage. I don't sure, remember. Sure. Um, so <laughs> first one, first one drops. And I mean, it just turns everything because they're still saying in the air and just like back and forth. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's so cool. It's so <laughs> close, though. I yeah. yeah. Some views close. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, and then the second one drops and then it's quiet again. So this time, instead of me running over there, we said they said Bradley. <laughs> smart, now, smart. Before we went out, I, I trained these guys to not give me grids or anything like that. If they see a crater or something or a bomb go off give me a, a kernel direction and a distance Smart. just wag it and yep. that's what he did and there was a, another force follow-up force i did it again dropped four of them all together and uh broke up that whole momentum nice of that force then another jtac called me and was like hey you got any bombs left uh because <laughs> there was another tank column coming down right for us oh, so man. i passed uh so we had i used four so we had eight 31s left i pass it off to this other jtac and he uh he took out that other armor force and then that was it um do you remember who do you know who that was the other I guy can't remember man that's all right i wish i did i should have wrote it down <clears throat> i was i was too busy trying to like <laughs> freaking just live uh um, yeah yeah should, for sure for sure um, <laughs> so jeez um, i know it's crazy so we were supposed Thank to God that b1 away. was like in i mean oh man Oh, so here's the crazy thing about that B1, right? Uh, what is his name? Uh, he's a retrainee, the master sergeant, right? He's coming out of the school for a while. And um, his, him and his wife were B1 crew chiefs, right? Well, his okay. wife uh, worked on that B1. That thing Hidden. was supposed to be hard broke. Her and her crew worked on that thing. And that's why the only reason it was up that night. Wow. If they hadn't done their job and, and that's a, you know, when, when we go talk to somebody or talk to a group of people to co go talk to a group of air force people, you know, no one should ever feel bad and say something like, well, I didn't really do anything in the war. Are you kidding yeah, yeah. me? Are you kidding me? Oh yeah. I mean, lives that her and her crew saved that night. Amazing. The ASOC guys did their job. You know, everybody was doing their job. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I'm the same way. I'm like, it really does take the whole entire force to, to do that. Because, because I mean, you would have been out there flapping if it hadn't been for those jets. But then those jets wouldn't have flown if it hadn't been for those guys on the ground and just, you know, the whole cycle. So, yeah, the absolutely. whole chain is is responsible for it. But, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. That's really cool. It is. And that's a uh, Hamill. You okay. know him? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, this is it was his wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, you know, she, she's forever going to be one of my heroes. <laughs> nice. So, and he's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's awesome, man. So, uh, you know, uh, daylight hits, right. And I, I guess we that's another thing. I can't, this whole thing was at night. Like it's yeah, like afternoon just, all the way. It was all through the night and right, oh right. When that about that ended it, it was only about another 30 minutes and when it hit the daylight hit us or so. Jeez. So it was all night hours wow. hours of fighting and uh so we're we're all sitting around like zombies yeah and uh there's just there's just dead everywhere it's nuts when yeah. the light hits it i mean it's just holy crap and there were people walking there's civilians you know people with kids yeah. they were hiding and i think that's what a lot of people don't realize you know we <laughs> We kind of glorify combat to some extent. There's a lot of innocent people that get caught up for in sure. the crossfire. People are living <laughs> there. And yeah, yeah, so this guy with his family, horrible. We, we tried to get, we get, we'd give him as much food and water as we could spare. Yeah. 
Um, and then well, I see this guy walking, right? And he's got the got the Arab kind of long long dress on. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's called. And and I'm kind of looking, and he's got black boots and green pants. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I said, "Hey, come with me." A couple couple of my best friends, heavy hitters. And we we nailed this guy. He was a Republican guard guy. Was he? Was he trying uh, to sneak out of there? Trying to sneak out of there. Yeah, went yeah, the yeah. wrong way. I think he's probably just trying to get the hell out of there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of Jeez. overwhelming force. So, uh, so I had I had mentioned to those guys that because uh, you run out of things to talk about, so it comes down to like, what's your favorite part of the MRE? Um, All right. I'm a big fan of the fudge brownie at that time. Sure, sure. And uh, I had went to go talk to the captain and I came back to my track and there must have been a dozen MRE brownies in there. <laughs> it was what a great feeling. Man. Amazing. I'm telling you, yeah, had it not been for you, having the wherewithal to, to keep your head and, and like control that that cast, I mean, it could have been a lot worse, man. It could have been a hell of a lot worse. So Man, good on you. That was well, awesome. they were. Uh, they told us like so. We were supposed to be relieved, so we can move on. And they said, "No, you got to stay there a few more hours." Yeah. Then we get this report that 10,000 10, vehicles are making their way towards us, and I'm like, "What? How do they even muster ten thousand vehicles? There's no way." Yeah. And I was trying to confirm this, confirm this, confirm this, and uh, we were going to be the first ones that they hit. Yeah. They coming down. Right. So I know. Right. So I'm like, Oh my God, we don't even have ammo. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at the AT4 going, I, is it just one tank per AT4 or can you get two shots? This is like a video game. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so I look at my Roman. I'm like, okay, let's, let's kind of do similarly what we did here. I'm going to start building the matrix and kind of TRP and uh, all the grids for JDAMs. Right. Uh, yeah. Cause we did pretty well with them the night before, you know, using them on moving targets and stuff like that. So I figured we could do a numbering system down. They come down and the captain said, how, how many can you get? And I go, I don't know how many I'm going to get, but uh, I know they're going to bleed all the way down here and it's going to be bad for them. And we might be able to break up their attack or at least stop it. So, sure, sure. um, <clears throat> Alo gets on, right. I don't know who this guy is. Um, he goes, he goes, I'm the senior guy and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to control this first. I'm like, you're not, this is, I'm going to control it. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. control any cast that comes near me. Cause it's that cast, right? Close air. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, so we're going back. He was going to try to control it from the talk. I don't, I don't even know where he was. <laughs> right. He could have been eating in a defect somewhere for all I know. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, Hey, I want a metal too. Uh, yeah. You know, no. So the division gets on there and says, no, I have it. Right. So finally, um, nothing. I don't hear anything else. And it it apparently was a false broadcast. Oh, okay. And I'm like, Oh God. Yeah, no doubt. (laughs) Thank God. Even even if you did have all the casts in the world, that doesn't mean that they're not, some couldn't got through. I mean, you guys are already just gone through this battle. I mean, the last thing you needed was another giant yeah. battle you know yeah well uh i did promise to tell you something uh that i don't i don't tell a lot of people this uh but it is relevant so when the armor not the ten thousand vehicles but the the actual armor that i hit with the jdams mm-hmm. uh when we were talking about that armor and i didn't know they had two choices the enemy did they could have fallen back like they did, which worked out for us, or they could have beat feet across that bridge and mixed it in with us, which would have taken us uh, negated all cast and anything like that. Yeah. At least they would have thought so. The The number one uh, worry was that they would get our tanks and our brads. And so there was a plan um, in place uh that I was going to try to trick the B1 crew into expending all ordnance on our position and take us all out. Oh my God. And it's not a noble thing. Um, and it's not a, um, 
a selfless thing to some extent. What it was was uh, we needed to win, and they couldn't have our equipment because they could have done more damage to Americans, uh, our fellow fellow service members, with that equipment. Yeah. So uh, from what I understand, uh, and I don't know this for sure, but there was a lot of people listening to that SATCOM radio <laughs> Because it was one of the it was one of the few times uh, since armor has been in that situation where they were almost taken out on an, an armor unit was taken out a, a U.S. Wow. armor unit. So I think people were really paying attention to that situation. Man, that makes a lot of sense because that it was yeah. that's a tactical decision you they had to make. Oh my God! I, what it man? Yeah, it, it sucks. Um, well, I, you're, you're amazing, dude. I can't, I can't believe it. That's, this oh, is, no, it, I, I'm, I'm you, just, that I, was a, all I did was just, uh, I, I did everything I was supposed to do. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I chalk you it had a ton, a ton of stuff on your shoulders though. I mean, it could, <laughs> I mean, God, I'm only five, six. That's I keep, it keeps pressing <laughs> me down. So <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I had oh. good leadership, man. I had a lot of motivated guys. I, I, I was never a, the greatest tech P I was a C student. Uh, I was never the best. I was never the worst. Uh, I just got put in a situation. And I think that's a credit to our career field to say that, Hey, any of our guys can be there.